Hi, I'm Fallon Samuels. I'm a PhD student at Harvard University in the School of Design. And uh, I was one of five undergraduate engineering students at Columbia University um, in my class. I majored in civil engineering, but I have now chosen not to pursue that as a profession. I am still interested in engineering, more interested in teaching the history of engineering and um, the relationship between engineers, architects, and urban planners. And so my question to you is how you think we should approach the teaching of engineering as a profession in terms of people, engineers' cultural identities. It's one of these things that as far as history of engineering or courses in architecture and technology, um, national identity is always something that is discussed. You know, it's the German engineers, it's the American engineers, it's the French engineers, and so forth. And rarely is there any kind of differentiation within those nation state categories. And so as someone who has um, been able to speak with people across disciplines and at various institutions, I just wanted to hear if you comment on that. Okay, let me, let me just understand the question. Um, teaching the history of engineering and developing engineers with their own identity and culture. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily just to be teaching engineers, but students in the humanities and the social sciences who are interested in studying engineers as a subject of study. Um, studying, in, uh, I'm repeating the question, but it's just a habit. Um, studying engineers, and I think everybody should take a look at that. And what I would say is, with the new administration, engineering has become a priority with him. Um, the National Science Foundation and a lot of its funding efforts looks for interdisciplinary programs, and they look for collaboration. What I would say to you is to look to see if there are any books that have been published on the history of engineers and look at where those faculty members are. What I will say to you is these are difficult economic times and it is a new field, so you would have to look into what the value add is for everyone in terms of doing this. And if I think you tie it into the stability of the American economy and an understanding of where technology plays a role, you can actually get that worked in. Now, I'm not going to do a plug for RPI, but um, RPI has had some professors who have written the history of the school. MIT has had its history written as a book. So those are two books to start off with. What I would say is um, while you're still a graduate student, you're a graduate student now you said in design? In the history of architecture in the Department of Design and you're at Harvard. What I would suggest you do is to contact a few faculty members and see if you can start to collaborate with them. In my opinion, I believe that this is something that is necessary but not clearly apparent to everyone. So I think you're going to have to do proof of concept first. You're actually going to have to do something in order to get people on board and get funded. So I'd say it, in the three hours that you're wasting sleeping a day, that <laughs> I'm just kidding because I think we should sleep. I <laughs> but that's how other people would perceive it, that you're not working hard enough because you sleep. I would say that you may want to start with um, some of the faculty members and see who might be receptive to it and start with something collaborative before you even graduate. And then you may be able to write a ticket for your own position to study that. Now, if you could somehow tie that into engineering education, because there's a whole branch in engineering education, and if you could tie that into engineering education and then expand it more broadly for the scientific literacy of America, I, I think you're good. Can I have two, please? Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 come back. Come back. Okay. We'll, we'll do three, and I promise I'll be on. Yeah. All right. Um, this is, I, I guess, it's more of a comment. My name is Michelle Levins. I am an instructor at UMDNJ School of Nursing. Hi, Michelle. Hi. I found your numbers to be almost equivalent to nursing. And as an instructor, um, having to go back for my PhD in nursing to you know, teach, it has been a struggle to find um, a mentor. I got one for you. <laughs> um, no, I, seriously, I, I have one for you. OK. Um, I actually spoke to someone at our school, and she said to me that even in nursing faculty that the numbers are so small for black uh, nursing faculty 
that maybe at one school in each state there may be one, maybe, but there's a very small number of faculty. You, I, I'm so glad I came to this conference. Florida A&M University has a nursing school, and many of the, the faculty members there are black women. At our church, there's a woman who went back to school after she had been practicing as a nurse. She went to uh, UF, she went to Florida A&M undergrad, she went to UF for grad school, and then went to uh, University of Alabama. While she had children, she would drive to wherever she was during the week, and her mom would help out her husband with the kids, and she would come home on the weekends. Please um, come see me. I'll give you her name. She's about to retire, so she's going to have some free time on her hands. And <laughs> but but um, I, this is what this conference is. You need to connect people with the people you know. Good afternoon. Hi. My name is Rosalind Floyd, and uh, I was an electrical engineering student in undergrad, and my experience in undergrad was so terrible. That's why I didn't go on to to be a to get a to get a master or a doctor. I recently got a doctor Friday. You did. I, Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, so as I was looking at your statistics, I was thinking, well, what can we do? As, I did I did get an electrical engineering degree, but what can we do to sort of make that experience better? for the undergraduate students because I think uh, from my research now they're having even a harder time because they haven't dealt with the isolation and loneliness in their, in their uh, middle class life that we may have earlier. In what, what I will say are there are different universities that have support systems set up for their black yeah. students. Um, RPI was great at that, MIT was very good at that, those are schools that I'm, I'm, I've been to. At our school, because we've got a historically black college as part of it, where you have normal students who have regular majors, um, there's a lot of support there. What I will say to you is, is not hopeful. With the number of degrees being awarded to foreign nationals, the understanding of American culture and where American citizens is coming from is not there. So um, I, I just want to clarify something. I, I do talk to black students all the time. It's just when someone tells me I have to, I don't like being told what I have to do. Um, it's, it's going to be an upward battle. It's an, it's an upward road. Engineers by our very nature are not very articulate people. We're not very social. We're not a lot of fun to be around. <laughs> You're shockingly yeah. social and fun to be around. <laughs> okay, thank you for saying I'm funny. But we have to thank my brother for that because he told me I had no common sense. You know. So <laughs> while I was getting common sense, I had to get a sense of humor. Um, we have to do something, and what I would say to you is NACME has a number of reports. NACME has certain schools that it relates to, and um, we're going to just have to nibble at it one school at a time, but the fish rots from the head, and if the dean doesn't think it's important, um, we can try to push for NSF to put some money into it, and then once money goes into it, maybe there'll be a few more efforts. But essentially, we just have to send students to the right schools. When I looked at your statistics, I was just curious, you know, did you have any in relationship to um, black students, whether they're male or female, going on uh, in other fields, coming totally out of electrical engineering? Like um, right I, now, he's a, a computer network engineer. So I, totally didn't, I didn't pull those statistics, but what I will say is that a number of engineering students will choose to go to business school. Yes, um, a, that's the way he's getting yeah, his master's. A big push now <laughs> yeah. is for yeah. black, grad, black students to go to law for intellectual property. Right. That's right. Um, they will choose, students will choose other fields, and I don't see that as a loss to us. I wish that America would graduate more engineers that go on to do different things. Yeah. I think we need more engineers in Congress. I think if we had someone who understood yeah. science in the office of the president for eight years, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. I agree. I agree. Because engineering is problem solving. It's that's not right. just solving engineering problems. Mm -hmm. When you see something that's not right, you try to find the answer. And if you don't have it within you, you get people who can help you. So what your son did, um, I, I don't have those statistics. I, okay. I, I don't do statistics for a living. Okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I know that a number of students will go on and do other things. Oh, but I, I know you want me to wrap it up. Yeah. What I will say is um, one of the problems that we have is that faculty members are arrogant. Mm -hmm. And I get in a lot of trouble because mm -hmm. I will take the two minutes it takes to review geometry or to review trig. 
I'd much rather take two minutes or five minutes to review trigs so that the students are with me for the next three weeks than to have them have lost them. all semester because they can't remember Sokatoa. That's you know? right. That's right. Yes. So, um, sorry. Got to go. Thank you. Thank you.